Okay, hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Vasya Calabri. I am doing a PhD here at KTH, and I'm also part of the Flink project as a committer and PMC. So, um, uh, Theo already gave you an introduction about Flink if you're not familiar with it, so I will not uh, give any uh, high-level introduction on Flink, but I will go directly on uh, in Jelly, which is the graph processing API that we are building uh, in Flink. So first of all, why would you want to do graph processing with a system like Flink, which is general purpose uh, system for distributed data processing? Um, first, we, we should look at the typical data analysis pipeline. So when you have a data problem, you have several steps that you have to follow. First, you might have data in, in different so from different sources. You need to clean them, as we heard many times <laughs> today. You need to transform them. And then, um, at some point, you need to uh, create a graph, maybe, out of this raw data, and then find uh, an analysis algorithm uh, and analyze this graph, and then uh, get some results out, uh, combine it with your uh, other uh, data, and finally get your, your answer. Um, what I want you to pay attention to is this loop I have there between creating the graph and analyzing the graph. Because uh, a very typical problem we have in this kind of pipelines is that it's hard to get this graph right uh, in the first try. So you might want to model different interactions as a graph. You might want to weigh them differently. And every time you have a new graph, you also might need to um, change the algorithm that you have to analyze it. So you might need to iterate several times until you, take, uh, you get this, this part of the uh, data analysis pipeline right. Um, and now, if you want to implement that, one way would be to choose a specialized system for all of these steps and then try to put them together. So you might have data in different sources, like... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's not my slide. <laughs> That's my slide. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the idea here is that you might need to uh, put together different specialized systems and then um, they have to talk to, to each other, maybe through a file system, and this of course, might take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So why we're building uh, Jelly on top of Flink is exactly so that we can replace all of these systems uh, with one, so, so that you can do both your cleaning of the data and creating your graph and analyzing your graph, and this iteration between creating the graph and analyzing the graph with one, uh, with one application uh, written in one API. So let's see. What are the... Uh, pros and cons of one or the other approach. Of course, uh, having specialized systems, uh, the, their biggest uh, advantage is that they have rich and very intuitive APIs. So if you, if you want to write a graph problem in a general system, uh, well, it might be hard to do if you don't have the right APIs. On the, on the other hand, uh, you have to, to learn how to use and how to configure and how to put together and how to maintain a lot of different systems. Now, if, if you want to do this with a general purpose system like Flink, you have the advantage that you only have one application to maintain and one system to, to configure and build. But what is missing is the intuitive APIs. And this is the gap that we're trying to fill here with, with Jelly. And of course, you would ask, what about performance? So is it better to use specialized system for, for performance or general purpose system for performance? So I will argue here that uh, Flink is quite uh, good for graph processing. It has some distinct fe features that make it a very, very good candidate for a lot of graph processing problems. So let me show you some of them. First of all, as Theo already uh, mentioned, Flink has native iteration support. And what that means is that iterations in Flink are just another special kind of operators. Um, so that means that the scheduler does not have to schedule a new job every time you need to iterate over, uh, over your data. 
uh, but it can do a lot of optimizations because it's aware that it's running an iterative job. So uh, here I'm showing the two operators we have for iterations in Flink. One is a simple one called iterate, and basically you give it a data set, you apply a step function, you get a new data set, and then you feed it back uh, to the input. Um, but the more interesting one is the one I have um, on, on the left, <laughs> the iterate delta. So um, the difference of that is that if you see, you can keep state inside the, the operator. And by that, uh, you can do a lot of graph processing jobs very efficiently. So what this lets you do is that you, uh, you have two inputs, so your, your input data set and your um, your changed data, which is the, the work set, and then you apply the step function on, on these both inputs, and you can make point updates to your state and then output a result. Uh, an example uh, of this would be running connected components. Um, so this algorithm, it has the characteristics that um, some nodes converge to their final value earlier than others. So you don't have to recompute the whole graph in every iteration. So here, if you see, I have an example graph. Uh, the um, uh, orange nodes are the ones that need to be recomputed, the ones that change value. And the white ones are the ones that have converged to their final value and don't need to be recomputed again. Um, so we see here that even in the first iteration, like half of the graph, we don't need to touch it again. And then in the third one, it's only two nodes that we need to, uh, to recompute, and so on. So using this uh, abstraction of the iterate delta, we can easily uh, take advantage of this characteristic and only feed back the changed nodes uh, in order to compute only what we need. Um, OK. Another thing that we can do uh, if we let the runtime know that it's running uh, an iterative job, is a few optimizations. Like, uh, we don't have to, to uh, have this scheduling overhead because uh, the, job is, the job plan is computed in the beginning. And uh, we can cache uh, and maintain the state uh, in memory. And another thing that the Fling optimizer is smart enough to do is that it will figure out if you have some, uh, some loop invariant data so if there is data that you use inside your iteration, but you don't change it, it will push it out of the loop, so you don't have to read it again and again. And it will, it will cache it in the nodes. Um, and as I said, we, we maintain this state as an index, so we can do very efficiently point updates uh, on, on the state. OK, but beyond iterations, because not only uh, graph, uh, graph algorithms are not only iterative, but some of them are, uh, Flink also has some other features that, are, that make it very, very performant. Uh, one is that it has its own memory management uh, framework. Uh, so uh, Flink has out-of-core capabilities, and also um, it does not suffer as much as other JVM frameworks uh, from um, garbage collection and uh, yeah, out-of-memory errors. And, um, it manages this because it, it manages its own memory. So it allocates the memory and then um, allocates parts of the memory to different operators, and it's much, much more efficient. Um, another one is that Flink has its own efficient serialization framework. So it can actually operate on binary data, if it can. Um, and a lot of operations like just skip serialization and deserialization altogether. Um, and uh, Flink also has an optimizer, uh, like um, quite similar to a database optimizer, uh, that it can choose the best, best execution strategy for like, uh, operations like joins and whether to, to cache data or repartition data and stuff like that. So this is already there. And using all these features, uh, we can build very efficient graph processing uh, on top of Flink. OK, so let's see what Jelly looks like. Uh, first of all, uh, Jelly is available both in Java and Scala recently. Um, it was already released with Flink 09, but uh, 010 is coming now, and it's much, much improved 
we have a lot of uh, a lot of new stuff in there. And the cool part is that you can seamlessly mix it with the data set of a API of Flink with the batch API. So that pipeline I showed you in the beginning, you can write it in one single program without having to I don't know uh, reformat your data from one uh, format to the other or something. So basically, a graph. In, in Jelly, it internally has data sets of, of the Flink API. So it's very, very easy, very natural to communicate. Um, so uh, in, the, in the Flink stack, Jelly is built on top of the Java and the, and the Scala APIs of Flink, and it has three main components. Uh, we have a few methods for transforming and um, um, ut uh, utilizing graphs. We have um, iterative graph processing um, methods, and I will show you the two models that uh, we currently support. And we have a, a library of ready graph algorithms that you can simply call by, by, by creating a new uh, algorithm. I'll show you how. So um, I'm using the Scala API in the slides because it's much more compact <laughs> and much nicer. So you can create a graph from data sets, so here I create one from vertices and edges, or you can create from like Java collections, and you can also <coughs> uh, directly initialize the vertex values if you want when creating the graph. So here, for example, I create a graph from a data set from a collection of edges, and then I set all the vertex values to be equal to their IDs. Um, that's just an example. Um, these are the available methods that we have on the, on the transformations. Uh, you can get several graph properties, so like the vertex IDs, or how many vertices a graph has, or how many edges, and so on. Uh, the degrees inside the data set, so you can play with that later. Uh, you can transform the graph as if it was a normal data set, so you can map the vertices, you can map the edges, you can filter. Uh, the graph. You can join the graph with external data sets. Um, you can compute uh, unions of graphs or differences of graphs, uh, reverse the direction, and so on. And of course, you can mutate the graph, like add and remove vertices and edges. So here's an example. Uh, if you have a very simple graph like this one, and you just want to increase all the vertex values by one, you can simply do this by applying a map vertices function and writing a lambda that uh, the value will be uh, the value plus one. So, as simple as that. And if you want, say, to get a subgraph where you keep only the positive vertex values and the negative edge values, you can do this with the subgraph method providing two UDFs. One would be, um, OK, keep only the vertices with positive value, keep only the edges with negative value. And this will give you another graph where these um, conditions uh, hold. OK. Uh, something more, more interesting, apart from just transforming graph from one to the other, is neighborhood methods. So neighborhood methods uh, actually allow you to apply um, a reduce function, an aggregation function, uh, on the neighborhoods of its vertex in parallel. So what this means is that you call um, reduce on neighbors or reduce on edges, and this will create groups of the vertex with its neighbors, and then um, you can access the values of the neighbors and you can create, uh, you can apply an aggregation function. So here, for example, I say um, reduce on neighbors mean value uh, edge direction out. So the edge direction will actually uh, actually tells if you want to get the out neighbors, the in neighbors, or you don't care about direction. So here I say it's edge direction out. So you see that I have, sorry, its vertex with its out uh, edges. And um, well, mean value would just go through the neighbors and uh, get the minimum one in this example. Okay. Um, as I said, the second part of, of Jelly is iterative graph processing. So currently, we support two models. We support the vertex-centric model, uh, the think-like-a-vertex, Pregel-like model. And we also support uh, a variation of gather-sum-apply iterations, which is more what uh, PowerGraph uh, brought 
uh, to graph processing. And we have built both of these models using this uh, iterate delta abstraction uh, that I showed you, and I'll tell you how. So the vertex-centric iterations, uh, what this model says is that in order to write a graph processing algorithm, you have to think like a vertex. So you, uh, you write uh, a function as if you were the vertex and what you want to compute and what kind of messages you want to send to your neighbors. Um, so um, for, for Jelly, what you have to do is just write two uh, UDFs. One is the messaging function, which says that every vertex uh, what kind of messages does it need to send to its neighbors? And the second one is a, a vertex update function, which says that given the messages from my neighbors, how to update my value? So these are the only two things that you have to write. And this is mapped on a delta iteration uh, like, like this, uh, the, the figure that I have on the right. So basically, the work set uh, is the active vertices uh, in the vertex-centric model, so the ones that, that have messages, uh, that have received messages in the previous super step, and uh, the other input is the edges. So we, uh, by co-grouping co the active vertices with the edges, we get the neighbors, and we apply the messaging function, so basically we send the messages to the neighbors. And then by co-grouping with the previous state, uh, this S there, uh, we can apply the vertex update function. So, based on the messages that we received and our previous state, what is our new state? Uh, and then we iterate. This is hidden from the user, right? The only thing that you do is write the two functions. Be, uh, having these messages, how to update my value. Having this value, what kind of messages do I send? So, let's see an example. Uh, this is uh, single source shortest paths. Uh, the API in Jelly looks like that. You have a graph and you call run vertex centric iteration and you define the two uh, UDFs in there. Well, here, one is distance updater and the other is a distance messenger. So, the distance messenger ba basically um, you get the, the vertex state and the messages and you say that if the message that I have received is lower than my current distance, then um, update my value, basically. And the update uh, and the distance, sorry, then send the message. And the, and the sorry, no, update my value, yes. And the distance updater uh, actually says that um, for, from all, all my edges, um, get my current value and the value of the edge and create a message and send it to all my neighbors. Okay. Now, this is one way to write uh, iterative um, computations in Jelly. You can also do uh, the same using gather some apply iterations. This is a bit different because instead of uh, breaking um, every step into like sending messages and updating your value, you have three different phases. One is gather. Gather actually parallelizes over the edges. So you transform every edge uh, into something else and you create a parcel values that in the second phase will be aggregated into a new value and then in the apply you get the previous value of the vertex and the newly uh, computed uh, value and then you decide what to do with them. Um, this is again mapped into delta iterations uh, in Flink. Uh, it's a little bit different so instead of co-groups we have a join and the map reduce uh, and then another join. But the API uh, looks like this. So instead of um, uh, defining two functions, you define three, uh, a gather function, a sum function, and an apply function. So the gather fac function actually takes a, a neighbor as input, and then you, you have to produce a new, a new value. So here we say, uh, take the neighbor value and the edge value and produce a new distance. So for every neighbor, you calculate the candidate distance. Then the sum will combine together uh, values until you get to, to a single value. So here you will take the minimum of two neighbors until you have a single one. And the apply will take uh, the old value and then new value and then choose the minimum. So you can do it both ways. Um, and you can also configure an iteration with 
different options, like, for example, what uh, parallelism you wanted to have, or uh, you, you can um, define aggregators. So aggregators are like values that all the vertices can write to, and at the beginning of its iteration, you can have access to them and read them and then update them based on your computation. You can have broadcast variables that are um, small data that you can broadcast to everybody that, so they can, they can share it. Um, you can choose a messaging direction. So if you've used Giraffe, for example, you know that you can only send messages to out neighbors. Uh, here you can actually say to out, to in, or all of them. And, well, you can access uh, some vertex data uh, inside the iteration as well. So which one? <laughs> which one and when? Um, so here I only have um, a visual representation of the first super step of a, a single source uh, shortest path uh, calculation. And what I want you to see is that in the vertex centric case, you parallelize over the vertex. So for example, vertex one that has three out neighbors, it has to produce three messages, one after the other. While on the GSA um, uh, case, then you parallelize over the edge. So you compute a, a new partial value for every edge. So if, um, if you actually need all your, neighbors, all your neighbors' values in order to create your partial value, then you can only do this with vertex-centric. If you can parallelize the uh, computation of these partial values, then uh, it's better to do it with uh, gather some apply. And you will see a big difference if your graph is skewed. So if you have some nodes that have many more neighbors than others, if you parallelize over the edges instead of uh, over, the vertex, uh, over the vertices. Okay. Uh, so the third component of Jelly is the library of algorithms. So actually, you don't even have to do any of what I showed you to run single source shortest paths. You can simply do graph run new shortest paths, and it will run uh, from, from the already provided algorithm. So we have uh, several algorithms ready for you, like page rank, uh, shortest paths, uh, label propagation, community detection. Uh, we have connected components, and then triangle count and enumeration. Uh, we have some upcoming algorithms as well, like uh, graph summarization, hits and affinity propagation. These are um, pending pull requests. OK, so what's next? Uh, there's a lot of stuff to improve. Uh, we're currently working on partitioning methods. Currently, we're using uh, Flink's default partitioning, which is hash-based. But we know that for graphs, uh, it makes a lot of difference if you do sophisticated partitioning. So this is uh, our priority right now. Um, a second very interesting thing is trying to integrate with graph databases, in, in sp uh, specifically with Neo4j. Um, and um, a very interesting project that we actually started here at 6 is integrating Jelly with, um, with the streaming API of Flink, so that you can do online uh, graph computations, either one pass or multiple pass. Uh, so there is a prototype on that. If you're interested, I can point you to, to the code. Um, other things that we're looking into is um, creating some specialized operators for skewed graphs, so we can make these computations more efficient, and um, integrating more iterative graph processing models. So, so far, we have vertex-centric and gather some apply. We would like to also explore um, partition-centric or neighborhood-centric or others. You can check our roadmap if you're, if you're interested. And, uh, well, if you want to try it, uh, we have a very nice documentation programming guide. Uh, we have tutorials on jellyschool.com that you can follow step-by-step -step, um, exercises. And we have a blog post explaining uh, in a bit more detail uh, what I've already told you. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, we have time for one question. Do you have one question? No? Don't be shy. <laughs> Step up. No? no? I'll ask a quick question. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if you compare uh, 
uh, jelly to say another library uh, on top of a um, general more compu computing platform like Graphics uh, mm. on Spark and so on. What would you say uh, as a developer is the most compelling reason to choose jelly instead of developing for Graphics or something like that? Okay, so there are many. There are quite many differences. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is that uh, we have well both a Java and Scala API. Some people like Java. <laughs> uh, the second one is that we have more flexible iterative models. So this uh, vertex-centric and gather some apply is unique to, to Jelly that it can support both. And also the vertex-centric model of Jelly is much more flexible than the, than the one uh, supported in, in Graphex. Uh, what they do better is partitioning, what we're working on now. Uh, but in terms of API and functionality, I think we're more or less um, we, we more or less have the same features. We are a bit better maybe on the iterative part because we have the, we have the good uh, right. native iterations of Fling and, well, they don't, but yeah, uh, yeah this is, I would say, the, the big uh, difference. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.